As always, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. As with most problems involving tension and other forces, our first step here is to draw a free body diagram for each of the three objects. Let's look at the free body diagram for the 5 kilogram object first. Now, of course, that object has a gravitational force exerted downward on it, and then it also has a rope attached to it, and we've labeled that upward force T1. We've colored it in red so that we can later distinguish it from a different tension force that we'll call T2. The 4 kilogram object also has a gravitational force acting downward on it, but if you look at the picture, you're going to see that the 4 kilogram object is attached to two different ropes. It's attached to the rope colored in red, and then the rope colored here in blue. We've already noted that the rope colored in red is T1, so we've labeled the T1 force acting upward on the 4 kilogram bucket, but then there's also a second tension, T2, present here in the blue rope, and we've labeled that as a downward acting force. The 3 kilogram object has a gravitational force acting downward, and then it has only one tension force, T2, acting upward, and that's because that object is connected to only one of the ropes. Our next step is to apply Newton's second law to each object individually. Now we have the sum of the forces acting on the object equaling the product of the mass and the acceleration of the object. We must not forget that when we're summing the forces, that any force that's directed upward is considered to be positive, and any force or forces acting downward are considered to be negative. So for example, for the 5 kilogram object, we're going to have the positive T1 force and the negative Mg force. Let's plug those in right here for the sum of the forces. We can also fill in the mass of the object. So here we have the equation. We'll do the same thing for the other two objects. We just have to be careful about one thing. Go back and look at the diagram and you'll notice that on the right side you have a total mass of 7 kilograms, right? You have the 4 kilograms added to the 3 kilograms for a total of 7 kilograms. On the left side you have only that single object that has a mass of 5 kilograms. Ask yourself which way, which direction will these objects accelerate? Will they accelerate downward on the bowling ball side? of the picture, or they accelerate downward on the bucket side of the picture. And of course, since there are 7 kilograms on the right side, the overall acceleration is indeed going to be downward on the bucket side of the rope. So the bowling ball is going to get pulled up while the buckets are going to get pulled down. The reason that we bring that to our attention is that the acceleration of the two buckets is going to be a negative acceleration. The acceleration of the bowling ball will be a positive acceleration. Now we've already noted here a positive acceleration. When we come over here to plug in, we have to make sure that we stick a negative sign in front of the MA term for both the 4 kilogram bucket and also the 3 kilogram bucket. So it's very important that we insert those negative signs in for those two buckets. Now with that in mind, we can include the sum of the forces and then also plug in the mass. We'll do this for the, both the 4 and the 3 kilogram objects. So now that we've established these three equations by applying Newton's second law, what we'll do is we'll clean up the workspace and we're going to stack the equations on top of each other. Now one reason to stack the equations in this manner is because when we go to add the equations together, we can see that the T2 term, we have a negative T2 right here and a positive T2 right here, those would end up canceling out. The T1 and T1 would add up to 2T1. The g's would add up to a minus 12g, and then the acceleration terms are going to add up to a negative 2a. We could further simplify this equation by dividing each term in the equation by 2. And then finally we could add 6g over to the right side. So here we have an equation for t1. We have it equal to 6g minus a. What's really nice is we can hold on to that equation, but we can also plug it in back into perhaps the first equation, and that's going to allow us to calculate the acceleration. So that's our next step. Let's add an a to the other side. Of course, these g's can combine. They are like terms, so that would just be 1g. So that's equal to 6a. And we divide both sides by 6, and we can see that the acceleration is equal to g divided by 6. So all we have to do is plug in the value of g, which of course is 9.8 meters per second squared, and then divide it by 6. And we end up with 1.63 meters per second squared would be the acceleration. Notice that's the acceleration of each object because all of the objects are connected together. So if the bowling ball is accelerated upward by 1.63 meters per second squared, then the buckets are also accelerating, but downward, 
1.63 meters per second squared. So each object accelerates by the same rate, but just in different directions. Now once we have the acceleration, the rest of the problem is relatively straightforward. All we have to do to find t1 is to plug in the acceleration where we see a in this equation right here. So there we've done it. We can plug in 9.8 for g, and then when we solve for t1, we end up with approximately 57.2 newtons. So that would be the correct answer for t1. For t2, if we look carefully, perhaps we can choose this equation right here. It looks to be a pretty simple one. Keep in mind that behind all this mess, it just says t2. So why don't we actually clean up the workspace and rewrite this equation that I just circled in red. So there is that equation. We can add 3g over to the right side of the equation. And then we'll fill in the a that we had found, the 1.63, and then fill in 9.8 for g. And when you do that, you should get exactly 24.5 newtons for the value of T2. We'll notice that the tensions in the two ropes are different. T2, which was marked as blue in the figure, has only a tension of 24.5 newtons. T1, which is colored in red, has a much greater tension, 57.2 newtons. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you like it, please subscribe, and you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.